Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit guide us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll get started in Luke, the first four verses today. Uh, before we do, I want to talk about Genesis 3.15 a little bit more. Genesis 3.15 says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This reference to her seed refers to the virgin birth, that Jesus wasn't born of a man's seed. He wasn't born the way that every other person who's ever been born except him was born. He was born of a virgin. And that is important uh, to, he would be fully human as is described in Luke. But as we went through the gospel of John, he was fully God. So when we get to John 1, 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, as we looked at in the first verse of John. Jesus has always been God, but he hasn't always been man. When he became flesh, he was born of her seed, and he got his humanity from her. But it's through the man that the seed of man, where that stain of sin comes from because as in Adam all die in Christ all shall be made alive so when we look at this very carefully in this passage is important that it says her seed because we knew that Jesus was born of the Holy Spirit okay and then it says it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel and this is where the Lord is talking to Satan and a head wound bruised thy head. A head wound would be considered a mortal wound that Jesus defeated death. He defeated the devil. He defeated everything on the cross uh, and he is the victor. But uh, when it says thou shalt bruise his heel, that's the indication that although Jesus would die physically, he would raise again because it was only a temporary situation for Jesus. So there's a lot of important theology that comes out of Genesis. In fact, uh, we should always look back to Genesis and uh, it's, it's when we refer to what's called the law of first mention in theology, we should always look back to when something was referred first. Uh, a lot of people are mistaken in terms of how they rightly divide the Bible. They don't rightly divide it if they aren't looking back to when uh, things were first mentioned in Scripture to define the New Testament. The New Testament uh, doesn't define the Old. The Old is where we should get the definitions from uh, for our theology in the New Testament. But let's look at Luke chapter 1. Now again, Luke was a Gentile. We talked about that. Um, and uh, Luke 1, it says, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having a perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Uh, so we have a lot of information in here in these first uh, four verses. You know, many people uh, wrote down things about Jesus. We know at the end of the Gospel of John, it said, you know, that uh, I suppose if all the things that Jesus did were put into books, it could fill the world. And uh, that's true. He's an infinite uh, God that we serve. And, uh, but, uh, I believe they were just even speaking just of the things that he did on earth, that if they, uh, the, it was so amazing, uh, some of the things that he did in his proofs and showing that he was God, but yet still people wouldn't believe. But Luke set forth to write a declaration of those things that are most surely believed among us. Uh, and what is the thing that is most surely believed that, uh, we have a gospel that if you uh, are a sinner, which all have sinned and fall, come short of the glory of God, then if you are a sinner, you need a Savior. And Jesus Christ died on the cross. And after three days, he rose again, according to the scriptures. 
Uh, so we're going to see those truths as in any other gospel in Luke. But uh, verse 2, uh, all these things, it says, Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Luke was there along the way. He was with the Apostle Paul on his missionary journeys. Uh, and uh, they had witnesses who saw Jesus. They saw him risen. They saw him uh, go to the cross, uh, all these things. You know, we may not have uh, have seen these ourselves, but the Bible actually says, blessed is he that hath not seen and yet believed. Uh, so let's remember that uh, we really have a blessing in that. I hope that uh, as you're listening out there, you're a believer and you have an understanding. If you're not, I know I do have some people who listen who uh aren't believers, uh, haven't come to a knowledge of Jesus as their Savior yet, and I encourage you to keep listening uh, to make sure the Bible again says examine yourself to see if you're in the faith, that have you really trusted Jesus? Are you born again? And if you question that, you need to get alone with him. You need to talk to him. Ask him to reveal himself to you and start studying his word. And he says, seek me with all your heart and you will find me. So verse 3, Luke says, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first. Now, I highlight that, and every time I read through that, that one amazes me, that Luke had perfect understanding of all things from the very first. Um, I do not. Uh, the goal is to continue to uh, grow in my understanding of things, and I hope that you're doing that. And as you continue to study God's Word, you're growing closer and closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. The goal of studying His Word should be to get to know uh, Jesus better, but uh, we want to have better understanding all the time. Uh, the Bible says, be ready at all times to give an answer for the hope that is within you. And that's going to those that are without Christ. We want to have those answers. I know many times when people have asked me questions in the past when I didn't know answers, and I guarantee you can find questions that I don't know the answers to right now. It drove me to look for those answers. And uh, we should want that. We should want that uh, perfect understanding of all things that Luke seemed to have. And then it says, to write unto thee in order most excellent Theophilus. Now he's writing this uh, in part as a letter to uh, a man known as Theophilus, but uh, there is some deep theology here that I know is true. Theophilus, the name means uh, loved of God or friend of God. Well, we, uh, if we look at that, you know, uh, we get a lot of that out of uh, Theo, which means God, and then uh, the second part uh, phileo is what we would look at, uh, the Greek word, uh, which means loved, but loved of God. Uh, we get our word Philadelphia, the, the city of brotherly love from that uh, origin of that word phileo. Well, you know, this gospel is written to us, those that love God, those that want to love God. Maybe again, out there, you're not a believer yet, but you're listening to these uh, words and you want to, and you want to be one that is loved of God. Well, to do that, you're going to need to recognize that you've sinned against him. You've lied, you've stolen, you've done those things. You need to cry out to him for forgiveness. And he's willing to give you forgiveness, and then you can be uh friend of God. Now, verse four, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things and wherein thou hast been instructed. And that's our goal. As we study the Bible, if we picked a verse that could be the theme of why we study the Bible, I believe Luke 1, 4, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. We want to know these things. We want to have them for certain. Psalm uh, 119, 11 says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. One of the reasons to study God's word is to uh, learn more about who he is. But uh, the saying is, sin will keep you from this book, but this book uh, 
will keep you from sin. That The more we study God's word, the more we have it in our heart, we grow closer and closer to him, more and more like him. You're never going to hit a sinless sanctification in this life, but we shouldn't want to be living in sin as we once did. We want it, We should want to shine a light to others if we're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And how do we do that? We study his word that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. We'll end there with the reading of his word today. May the Lord bless you today.